Hey everybody, it's your old pal Mike. I hope you're happy, healthy, and safe. And listen, I've got something really cool on the bench right now, and I wanted to tell you a little bit about the job I'm doing. The owner of this 335 requested that I install a Bigsby, which is no big deal. It's drilling a couple holes, lining up some strings. Not a big deal normally. However, now that I'm well into the job, well, I've got a little bit of a problem. You see, it's not one of drilling holes or string tension or alignment, none of that. The issue I'm having is sort of an aesthetic nuisance, something that bugs me, and when I reached out to the owner and pointed it out, they said, oh yeah, that bugs me too. So I wanted to walk you through the process by which I'm going to overcome this pet peeve, if you will. Let me explain. So here's the problem. As you take a look at this guitar, one thing that will likely stick out to you is the fact that the hardware is aged. But wait, the Bigsby provided for this job is brand spanking new. It is shiny and bright as can be. And that simply won't do in the context of this very well played in and well loved ES-335. So what do we do about it? Well, friends, we are going to artificially age this ourselves. For this video, I'm going to walk you through the process I've used time and time again to take a brand new Bigsby and turn it into brand old Bigsby, something that looks a little bit used and, and worn and aged. Let's dig in. Now, the first step is to remove the arm. It's just easier if you do so. And that's simple enough. It's just a nut and bolt situation. Simple enough. Just remove the arm, and I also like to remove this little, what looks to be brass spacer, and set it aside because I don't really need to age any parts that aren't being seen. So make sure you set aside the spring, the nut, the washer, and that little spacer. I'm also going to remove this fiber spacer that has some grease on it and set it aside. The second step in the process is to remove every single piece of felt on the unit because I didn't do that the first time and they got a little goopy. Uh, but the more of these you remove, the happier you're going to be at the end. And they will just stick on if you want to use them. And there are three on the underside of the unit. These really are easy to get off. Use a razor blade if you're having trouble pulling them up, but they really just come off with very little effort. We are going to be putting these back on later, so it's best to keep them in a single piece if you can, because they are there to prevent marring of whatever finish you're installing this onto, so do keep them around. Now that those pads are removed and the arm is off, we are going to do some prep work in the form of pre-dulling the finish with some sandpaper and even some steel wool if we feel like going that far. And the reason for that is to encourage the oxidation process that we're going to go through. If I just leave it super shiny like this, the results won't be quite as dramatic or, to my mind, as pleasing. So we're going to knock back the shine and dull it up a little bit in order to encourage the aluminum to react. So to get started, I am just going to start sanding away at that bright, shiny finish. And I'm going to make sure I go along with the lines that are already in the aluminum. I don't want to go side to side when that's not quite how the unit looks off the bat. I'm just going to attack every single area of this Bigsby that's shiny and pristine, and we're just going to encourage it to start looking older. This is 800 grit. I don't think I would recommend going any lighter than this because that's just going to leave gigantic deep gouges in the housing here and yeah we're, we're going for a tasteful aging not like dragged behind a truck knock back that shine i'm also going to do the letters just to have a consistent look throughout and it's okay if you sand away a little bit of this because we will be making that look old as well down the line 
and we may just pull this off entirely. A lot of old Bigsby's lose the black paint entirely, so yeah. So depending on what kind of look we're after, that might be in the cards, so to speak. And I'm just following all of the curves and contours of the Bigsby, trying to make sure that I'm getting every single exposed bit of metal here. That's a little hard to get in some of these crevices, three-dimensional plateaus, but we certainly are going to try. And don't forget to do the sides of the unit as well. Like I said, you want every exposed bit of aluminum. And if you miss a spot, don't worry too much about it. It's okay if your prep work isn't perfectly consistent because, because Guitar parts don't totally age consistently. Not every single part is going to get the exact same amount of wear. And even on the underside, nobody ever really touches over here. So, you know, it's, it's a little less prone to oxidation than other parts that face the user. So we're going to make sure to go extra hard on this side. With as long and as even sanding lines as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now it's worth noting that the roller bar and the anchor bar are both plated in nickel and thus they won't have the same reaction to the household item I'll be using to age so you know you can feel free to dull these up a little bit although I will note that on real old Bigsby's these also don't age quite as much. Same thing with the arm itself. The arm is also a little bit different than the aluminum housing here and thus you'll look at old Bigsby's and you'll see these looking a little bit different. So if they don't look identical, again, that's okay and that's in line with what we're after. I'm also going to just dull this up a little bit, sanding in long smooth lines so that I'm not going across the body of it and making it look super duper totally fake. Yeah. So for that process I was using 800, but I'm about to go over all of it again with 1000, just so that I can smooth away any of these very obvious sanding marks. Oh, and while you're at it, don't forget to do this part. Uh, this part, not a lot of people are going to see it, but if it's brand new and shiny, it will stand out, so don't forget. Just give that the littlest bit of attention. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not the forward-facing part of the Bigsby that matters most, but hey, go the extra mile and your aged Bigsby will reward you. Now that we have appropriately dulled up this finish, just one last pass with this stuff. I don't know what this is called, but this is sort of like a, a soft, kind of very porous, spongy sanding material. I don't know what this is, but I'm just going to do a final, I guess, buff with this and just get as much of the sanding debris off of this as possible. And that's going to do away with some of the more obvious sanding lines that I put in this thing. You may not even need to go quite as hardcore as I'm going right now. I'm just doing my due diligence and making sure that I'm going to get the best possible result. And because this is spongy and porous, this sort of gets in those cracks and crevices a little bit better than the sandpaper, but I still 
wanted to make sure I was starting with sandpaper and kind of following the lines that I wanted. But you can see this is already dull and you could stop here if you want to. This doesn't look bad at all, but it's not quite what we're going for. So we are going to continue down the path of artificial aging and boy oh boy, will it look cool. Well, this looks like it's in good shape, so we are going to change locations to my kitchen where I will reveal the next portion of this process. All right, so we have relocated to my kitchen and that is where all of my weird and fantastic guitar experiments usually end up taking place. And for this job, I'm going to need two things. The first one is time and a lot of it. I'm talking over a day and the second my old friend distilled white vinegar. Now, white vinegar is one of my favorite tools in the guitar repair trade. Distilled white vinegar is excellent at removing rust. So it's perfect for, say, taking a bridge or a bridge saddle, something that won't adjust anymore because of rust buildup. You soak it in distilled white vinegar for anywhere from a couple hours to you know, overnight sometimes, if it's really extreme stuff, you grab a toothbrush and you scrub it right off. It, it, it works beautifully. It, it's one of my favorite processes and it's non-destructive. It's excellent. Distilled white vinegar also has a superpower, which is that it reacts with certain kinds of metal. This is for copper, this is for stainless steel, and it's also, ding, 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 you guessed it, it reacts with aluminum, and when aluminum is left to soak in it for an extreme amount of time, well, it starts to take on that dull look of a vintage part. So, I've already prepared the spring and the screws, anything else that I'm going to be using with this unit. And what we're going to do is let it soak for a long time. So what we're going to do is just start pouring. And I'll be pouring until the Bigsby is completely covered. My little Tupperware container here uh, is not quite tall enough to totally cover every part of this, so I will soak a paper towel in here as well and just let it rest on top, and that'll do the job just as well. So I'm gonna let this sit completely covered in vinegar for anywhere from 24 to 36 hours. Now I should start seeing results right around four hours in. That seems to be when the reaction really starts to become visible. But to achieve the same sort of look that the hardware on that guitar already has, it's gonna take over a day, I absolutely know this. All right, so we're gonna let this sit for a while. It is 1 p.m. now, so I'm gonna check in right around 5 p.m., probably about the time that we start thinking about what we want for dinner, and we'll see if we have any visible results. All right, it's actually six o'clock. I sort of overshot my uh, 5 p.m. deadline, uh, but this is a little bit of an update. It has already started losing some of its perfect sheen. I don't know if that's coming off in the camera very well, but it's only been, what, five hours and it's already dull. So that's a good sign. As I mentioned earlier, the arm and other nickel-plated parts probably won't dull up in the same manner as the aluminum of the body, but they'll still take on a little bit of a muted look as well. So don't worry too much about that. That's just natural. Spring is also starting to look a little bit more dull. So that's good news all around. We are going to keep this soaking throughout the night and see what we get in the morning. Also, while we're here, I want to mention that you can totally go the extra mile and dismantle the Bigsby completely, removing the C-clips and the anchor bars, etc., etc. Um, vinegar doesn't seem to be as harsh as like a chemical stripper, and so every time I've done this with vinegar alone, I haven't noticed any problems with the ball bearings inside. It all works just fine, uh, and in fact, at the very end of the process, I usually end up lubricating just a little bit more with some grease or three in one, whatever's around. And so you can totally dismantle this, but don't worry too much about it if you're only using vinegar. If you're using something else, then absolutely, you might want to dismantle the piece entirely. All right, so we will see you again in the morning.
Okay, it is the next day, and I thought I'd take a look and see what we're working with here. So, I'm going to pull back. Ah, look at that. That's some nice dulling of that aluminum finish. Look at that. That's already taken on a lovely muted look. Yeah, and it feels pretty muted as well. I'm going to rinse it off real quick. Okay, so I have just rinsed this off quickly and wiped it down with a paper towel. And you can see it's it's got a beautifully muted look to it. It already has lost its glossy shine. The mirror-like finish is gone, and it is looking very good as far as you know, matching the hardware that's on that guitar. I might let it soak just a little bit longer. I think I think this is good and might work well enough, but I want just a little bit more out of it. But this is already looking really good. All right, so yeah, I'm going to submerge this just a little bit longer and see what we get. Probably, probably until mid-afternoon. We'll see. A few more hours at least. But uh, yeah, this is this is looking pretty damn good already. Okay, well, I uh, definitely overshot my mark, got a little bit busy with editing some other videos, but I'm back, and I am going to see what we've got going on here. In fact, I think I'm just going to move this whole thing to the sink and pour it out and bring it right back. Okay, here we go. We've got a really nice patina on this Bigsby. This looks great! notice how the shine is completely gone and now we are left with this sort of dull finish that uh, yeah just looks the part to me uh, I'm gonna rinse these parts off as I said before the uh, arms usually don't age in quite the same way but they'll still take on a little bit of a muted look uh, wow that spring came out really nice the screws are tricky, but they are at least, I don't know, a little bit, a little bit dulled. That's fine. Right, so, yeah, that looks really good to me. I just rinse with some water. You don't need to use anything too fancy, but if you want, I'm sure you can... Give it a bath in WD-40 or something. Uh, but this is looking good to me. Notice how the anchor and roller bars have really aged nicely. It almost looks the way that it would had you been sweating on it for 40 years. So that's a nice treat. Just gonna make sure I dry everything off. In fact, I almost like this a little bit more than my own. And this should continue to age just a little bit as it dries um, because it's now exposed to the air and the air will continue just a little bit, but it's okay. That will only add to the look. Spring has lost its sheen just a little bit. We're not, we're not trying to go for rusty here. We are just attempting to give it a little bit more of a uniform look with the casing of the Bigsby, so this will fit the part. And when I pop it in there, doesn't that just look like it belongs? Looks great, still works. Perfect. Like I said, these won't age quite the same way, but anything helps, really. You don't want this super bright, shiny, almost chrome-looking thing glaring back at you from the uh, from the Bigsby but that that just looks a lot better to me look at that look at that overall I am extremely happy with how this came out and I think it's gonna do a lot for a more uniform look with the rest of the hardware on that guitar so we've got ourselves some tastefully aged or relict parts uh, using nothing more than a very common household kitchen ingredient and uh, that is a win in my book. So I'm going to install this on the 335 and show you what it looks like in context and I think you'll agree that it looks a lot better than it would have when it was shiny and new. 
Okay, so I have installed the Bigsby, and man, does it look a lot better than it would have if we had just left it with that perfectly shiny finish. Uh, it still works perfectly, it looks great, it fits in beautifully with the rest of the hardware, and uh, I could not be happier with the results. Now this video is meant to give you an idea of what you can do to knock back the shine of a brand new part like the Bigsby. So overall, I'm really happy with how this came out. I think it looks great. Uh, however, if you plan on doing this at home, you will absolutely avoid any warranty or ability to return a damaged part. I am a tech. I have done this many, many times uh, without issue. So just bear that in mind. If you feel like your Bigsby is maybe not fitting in visually with the rest of your instrument. There are resources out there for you. There are other companies that pre-age Bigsby's. This is just one way of doing it and it is the way that I normally do it because it is a kitchen-based solution. So anyway, I hope you're well. I hope that this was informative and entertaining, but not, again, not perfectly instructional. Bear that in mind. Uh, thanks for watching and we will see you next time.